The Democratic Alliance says that they're taking the EFF to court about the national shutdown. Let's just listen to some highlights from what John Stainhazen had to say. They had a press brief. Yeah, is going to today be launching uh, legal action and mobilizing society against the intimidation and the threats of violence being peddled by the EFF and their members and public representatives across the country ahead of the so-called national shutdown planned for Monday the 20th of March. The DA takes the EFF's threats extremely seriously and we're not going to sit back on our hands as and allow them to threaten businesses, livelihoods and the lives of our citizens. If people want change, the most powerful protest mechanism available to them is their vote. And there is no better way to bring about social change than at the ballot box. There are three things I want to speak about today. Number one is the political implications of this for the Democratic Alliance. Number two, where I agree with them and where I disagree with them. And number three, um, actually explaining the right to protest and all of the regulations around this. So on the first thing, what are the political implications of this for the Democratic Alliance? I think that this is good politics for the DA. One, it's going to help them a lot with fundraising. They're going to be able to fundraise off this, and that's something that a political party always thinks about. Number two, it's going to position them as the anti-EFF party for a large part of the electorate, and that's also going to be good politics for them. And also, it's a way for them to piggyback off the attention that is coming from this particular event to actually profile their political party. So good politics for them. Where do I agree with them? Now moving to the second thing. I agree that violence and intimidation and protests are wrong. And I agree that uh, all protests should be peaceful. I stand for that and I believe in that. Uh, where do I disagree with them? The Democratic Alliance said in their press conference that 2024 is the solution, that people must deal with the ANC or air their grievances through the vote. That's what they said. But I disagree with that because I think that protest is a way of putting pressure on the government, of expressing yourself, of participating in politics. And also, the Democratic Alliance has participated in protests before. On the 7th of April 2017, there was a national shutdown that was called for by Safe South Africa, other organizations, and the Democratic Alliance participated. John Stainhazen was actually there. So, if you think about 2017, there was an election that was coming up in uh, 2019. Why didn't the Democratic Alliance just simply say that, no, we don't support protests. We're going to wait for 2019 to have an election. So I think that that's hypocritical and also that it's wrong to say that there's only one way to participate in political activity and that's to uh, necessarily vote. I also think that it's very, very um, slippery for us to presume that there's just going to be violence of a particular nature simply because it's the economic freedom fighters or simply because of some of the rhetoric of members of the EFF, which may not be reflective of the things that will happen on the day. We have to be very cautious. Obviously, we know that um, there are instances of um, vandalism during protests, there are instances of intimidation, so we can't rule it out, but we have to be cautious when we are casting aspersions or making inferences of things that have not yet happened. Now, the third thing that I want to just uh, give everyone a framework of, because oftentimes we don't have quality analysis that looks at this, is just what is the legislation around protest action and how is protest action supposed to be done? Right. Uh, from the South African Human Rights Council, we get some information that South Africa has approximately 13,500 protests every year of which, according to the South African Human Rights Council, most are non-violent. Now, Section 17 of the Constitution provides that everyone has the right, peacefully and unarmed, to assemble, to demonstrate, to picket, and to present petitions. In South Africa, protests of more than 15 people are governed by the Regulation of Gatherings Act 205 of 1993, and also related to that uh, is the Danger Dangerous Weapons Act 15 of 2018. And that actually provides prohibitions in respect to the pro possession of dangerous weapons. Now, a public space is defined as any street, road, park, public square, the steps or grounds of a building or other similar place. You do not need to ask for permission to protest, 
but you must give notice and I think this is what the EFF has been doing you are required to give notice otherwise your protest is illegal section 3.2 of the Regulation of Gathering Acts provides that the convener shall no later than seven days before the date on which the gathering is to be held give notice of the gathering to the responsible officer concerned. Any gathering that happens without a notice being given is an illegal gathering. The convener basically means any person who of his own accord convenes a gathering or any person who's appointed by an organization or any branch of an organization to convene a gathering. What should the details of what should the notice uh, entail? Details of the convener, name of the organization, purpose of the gathering, place of the gathering, number of people expected to be in attendance. There is a lot of legal space in South Africa for there to be a protest. And as we saw in 2017, you can have protests that are supported by business, civil society, the works. And it's important for us to know that there are various forms of protest, right? A national shutdown can be one of them. A stay away can be one of them. All of these things will have economic implications. That comes with the territory. When businesses gave people a day off in 2017 so that they could protest, on that day, businesses did not make money. There was disruption of the economy. What is not sanctioned is violent protest. What is not sanctioned is use of weapons and all of that kind of thing. So as they go to the court, the Democratic Alliance will really have to prove because they're trying to interdict uh, letters and notices that have been sent. And I'm not sure they will be able to do that. There's a lot of space given in the Constitution of South Africa for the right to protest. There's precedent, as we've seen from the 7 April protest in 2017. And that was supported by multiple parties, civil society, and the Democratic Alliance participated. This is good politics for the Democratic Alliance. I do not think, however, that they may be success successful in all aspects of uh, the litigation that they're trying to pursue. And I do think that the EFF does have this right to, um, along with the other parties that have said that they're going to be participating in this, to actually um, carry out this kind of a protest. I don't support violent protests, just so that everyone always understands whether it's Fismas Fall or nurses or um, political parties. I, I don't support that. And I want that to be clear. So don't get from this any something that I'm not saying. But that's my analysis. Uh, what do you think? What are your views? Let's have a conversation.